Heroes Lounge Division 1. And, well, it's time for Battlefield of Eternity, everybody. We got Ross Pidol against Pepe Malady. So, as to my knowledge, this is two uh, Polish teams. And Pepe Malady approaches the games in Division 1 with a very simple concept. In game number 1, they are a little bit more out of the box with their combo. And then, depending on the outcome on the first game, uh, they adjust in game number 2, game number 3. So, at this point, we have on the left side the blue team with Makotzl on Diablo, Nashir on D. Diva, Bronig on Reyna, Tenwa Clef on Li Ming, and Cassia on Deckard Kane with Pepe My Lady rocking Stitches by the Will Q. We got Richu on Gazlo, Cesar Boss on Kalthuzar, Dyla on Lulcio, and Gorider is playing Kira. So, the Mechalot himself all the way up at the top. Will Q with his level 1 going straight into the patchwork creation right here. And it's gonna be a bit of an interesting one. Again, they're playing always a little bit more out of the box in game number one in the Division 1 matches. And, yeah, we'll see how this is gonna work out now. Now, if you have Stitches, you kinda wanna have a follow-up after a successful hook, and I don't really see it. I mean, if you play it perfectly with Kel'Thuzad, then there are chances that you can lock someone down. But this is not the traditional setup of what you would look be looking for. Tyrande, Malfury, and so many others would work better, <laughs> and already Kel'Thuzad gets shut down immediately. That was a quick one. That extra damage that comes now from towers and forts against heroes played a bit of a role there, of course, as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Jimmy, of course, since this is Battlefield of Eternity, has gone into Exterminator. It's all about that damage against uh, against Immortal. You want to try and get as much of that as you possibly can. And so far, well, it's looking good. Now, bot lane, that's where we have our one versus one match now between Gaslow and Diva. So the four man has started to rotate towards the top. And, uh, yeah, let's see who is going to take the camp. Right now, it feels like the red team is at least willing to go for it, but the blue team is also trying to connect with it, and they are starting to make their move. And can they steal it away? Uh, Jimmy is trying to deal with Lucio here. Nobody from the bot lane has rotated over, so it stays a 4 versus 4 at least for now. And yep, there we go. That's a kill against Diablo, and that might be Gorider. <laughs> Swing, and he gets the rods connected and takes down Jimmy. <laughs> Everybody dead and dying, including the old man. Another hook attempt from Will Q, and they take the camp then after all. Yeah, big fight right there. I mean, honestly, that was a full fiesta setup with... I mean, how many kills in total? Five or what? Three to two in, our, in, uh, in total, but yep, that setup topside was definitely a heavy one for the first camp. Now, we have level four abilities still on both sides, and that gives us actually Ruby as the level four choice for Deckard Kane this time. We also got Gazler with the hyper focus coils after going into the rocket boots here initially. And still rotational play to the bottom of the map by the red team as Pepe Malady uh, tried to put a bit more pressure on Tunisia and his diva. But as the objective gets announced, the teams are both moving towards their shaman camps to time them so that the lanes are pushing while the objective is on lane. And Will Q is holding the top lane, so he's actually the one trying to hold the experience here for them. So far that's working out nicely. Question is of course if they can maybe do even a little bit more here. Bottom of the map. Yeah, careful here. And up towards the top, there we go. There's actually the approach of Ross Piedol. And they got a really good lineup for the Immortal. You got Li Ming, who can always poke and will normally get solid damage connected with the Immortal. Doesn't do any de extra damage or anything, but for the opponent, it's really annoying when Li Ming just gets those combos shoved in because someone has to take the damage, either the Immortal or a hero. And then you got Jimmy, who with his level 1 is just insane on this map. Probably one of the best damage dealers, if not the best damage dealer right now against Immortals. Up there with heroes like Greymane, Bala with an arrow build and others. But yep, they are trying to get that halftime show. And Gazlo is dealing with the bottom, but he's a bit slower on this one. Then again, the heroes here are in trouble. And that could be the end of Diablo, and indeed he falls. Diablo is down. Kelsozard with a kill. Five kills to two. And Pepe my lady, ladies and gentlemen, are making this draft work at least in the early game. So they want to get a little bit more. Gladiator's medallion. And bam! Diva is dead. The problem is <laughs> the same thing applies to the immortal. So they got their kills in. I give them that. But they lost the immortal. So they won the battle. They lost the war. Not the entire war yet. 
The game is still open, but the pressure at the bottom of the map is going to come from Rossby at all. So let's see if they can take that fort down. Uh, the shield is good, but again, they shouldn't be able to take the entire fort. But just going through the wall and taking some of those should be more than enough. So, yeah. Let's see if they can trade positively. Because as you can tell, the uh, experience gain that we had from Paper My Lady is pretty much removed already. And not really that far ahead, so those kills might not have been worth it. Right now, the Immortal has already destroyed the entire gate. It's going to put some serious damage also onto uh, the fort if the rest of the team is pushing in a bit. Ah, Gasler moved away, so they're actually defending this as 5, which leaves Diva alone up at the top. But that's still solid damage. That's more than 50% of the hit points gone. And I don't think that extra kill against D.Va was worth it. So now we have a small even experience. Maybe they can capitalize on that later on. Gazlo is back up at the top. Jimmy is taking the camp. So as long as they can exchange camps, they're going to be fine here. And Jimmy seems to be able to take this without being disturbed by anybody. Gazlo is rotating back down to the bottom of the map. So Jimmy is going to be all right. And he's taking the top. And now Diva is coming in again. Okay, they're trying to combo that off with Deckard Kane. Oh, nice! Good move by Kel'Thuzad. He has 16 stacks already on the baseline, working of course to complete this and get the extra damage output. But topside, they're pretty much alone. And Brodek is gonna get some serious work done here. I mean, damn! Of course the rotation is now happening, but... Pff, <laughs> this is gonna hurt! I mean, look at this shit! That thing is going to be down to 50% HP, so uh, they should be really happy with what they just got here. Especially since Paper Malay didn't even take the bottom camp. They couldn't get even this one while well, they had a 5 versus 4 going for themselves. So they might lose it now too. That was a bad spot for uh, Paper Malay to be in. Uh, on the macro level at least. Again, they are still in a slight lead in experience, but that lead is shrinking. And structurally speaking, Rospedal is getting farther and farther ahead over here. Now Diablo is also done with his quest, so he has the Rewife. Next Immortals are gonna come up soon. <laughs> I can't believe that those camps still haven't been taken yet, by the way. So this one gets attacked now, but yeah, can they take it? Okay, they can. Yeah, they finally get it. It wasn't contested. Nobody moved in for it and tried to take it down. That could have happened for sure, but not so in this case. Alright, so what else are we gonna get out of this one? For now, we have Will Q starting to push this again up towards the... Uh, Top left, we have the immediate... I mean, this is a halftime show victory right there. Bronick, if he can connect those auto attacks again with Exterminator, he's going to lock it in for the team, and he does. The attend abilities are already slightly faster for Pippin, my lady. And honestly, in that time frame, that might just be enough to force either a fight or win Immortal. That, on the other hand, didn't really do anything for them. I mean, I guess it zoned them away from the camp, but that would have happened either way. And they didn't only use the Gravel Bomb, they also used Putrid Bile. So that's two ults out for pretty much nothing. Because there was no chance that Rospedal is fighting this fight in the first place without level 10. So now that advantage is pretty much gone already. There is no level 10 for Rospedal yet, but all the ults with the exception of Kira have already been used by Paper Lady. So what are you afraid of? So they can easily wait for the rest of the XP to tickle in and then take the fight here. So I think there was a bit more potential over here. So, well, let's have a bit of a look. At this point, we got Topside, Gaslow is currently doing his thing. We have at the same time now, of course, the push from the blue team, since they still have their level 10 abilities, which includes Bunny Hop, by the way. Bunny Hop, we got also Deckard Kane. There's a lot of control spells now coming in on 10. And Jimmy and Li Ming are starting to take those hit points down, and they are winning this. Maybe my lady needs to... They need to land a hook or something. If they can land a hook and get a quick kill, that would be perfect. But things are looking a bit rough. And there's the pressure. Bunny hop in the back. That's the end of Kel'Thuzad. And one of the damage dealers is down. That guy just doesn't have any hit points. One of the main reasons why he doesn't get any playtime. Stitches doesn't get a whole lot of playtime either. And he's down too. So that's two heroes eliminated. Four to five kills now. And another immortal for Ross Piedol. So yeah, they are looking good at this one. All right, and that brings us to another push at the bot lane where this time the fort will fall. Only question is, can they get more? That's, yeah, rather the question. I mean, over here, we got 25,000 now for Li Ming. We got 18,000 for uh, Kira as the top damage. 
And as I mentioned previously, again, Paper My Lady is willing to experiment in games a bit when they start into the series. That's what they usually do in map number one and they see how it goes. Now we have the insta blow up against Li Ming. Wow, yeah, if those hooks connect, of course, then you can get the damage output to blow someone up within seconds, especially if he hits one of the squishies. And that is about as good a defense as you could have hoped for here. Now, top side, Diva is still trying to take another fort down. And I would still call that a win for the blue team. I mean, they got a four, they got the bot wall, and now top side they get fort number two, quite likely. So, despite the fact that we still have a kill advantage for Paper My Lady, they're now falling behind in experience. They're losing out at the top. There comes a move for Lucio, who escapes the bunny hop on Gaslo. Yeah, but there's not too much follow-up happening right now, since Stitches is still with the Putrid Files only in the back line out. And Mech Diva could be in trouble here. Comes in quickly. Ooh, yeah, and there's the Mech ready. And that's the end of Will Q. <laughs> Will Q's down, and we're gonna see Dyla fall as well. That's two eliminated. They try for a counter kill that they cannot get. Nope, Deckard Kane keeps it alive. Go Rider. Oh my god! Three hit points, and he dies. Oh, wow. <laughs> he went in the ult there. But yeah, here we go. That's the fight that we just saw. So a quick look at it again. The kills up at the top, as you can see. First they isolate Stitches. Then they also make the play for Lucio. And that's two heroes down. That's a level 13 talent for them. Just a bit quicker. And yeah, they're just looking solid right now. There's the Illusionist now coming in. And with seven kills to six, that's just where we're at at this point. A full control play by Ross Pidol. And Paper My Lady has to try and bring this back. So that could still be... I mean, again, you could still bring this back if you are having good Stitches hook. You got the Fishing hook now, so that really helps. That makes the entire hero so much scarier. And you have, of course, always follow-up options as well. So we'll, yeah, we'll check that out. Uh, but still, in the middle of the map as the next Immortal is about to spawn, we have two lanes pushing now against the red team. Forts are gone. So, despite the fact that they did some damage, at least at the bottom lane to the fort of their opponent, they are heavily behind the structures. They are still trying to fight for the Shaman camp here, which doesn't work out either. So that bot lane is going to be a concern at some point. 11 minutes in should really do a whole lot, but since the wall is already gone, that keep could suffer some damage. So, they really have to decide how they want to play this, especially since the top lane is also pushing. Gazlo is playing it out on the right side. Here comes the play against Li Ming and the kill. Nice. Good job by Kira coming through with the old and murdering Li Ming here. Absolutely murdering her. And as long as the fight is still going strong, there is a chance for them. Stitches is a bit low, but we have Lucio coming in and using the sound barrier to help them out. Diva again. The Shia, the hook. Nice. That should be the end of the pilot. Bot lane is getting damaged though. This is exactly the scenario that I warned about just a second ago, so uh, this is a problem. And the fight is not stopping. Nope, they're still fighting out for this. That is a huge problem for the red team. Despite the fact that they got two kills, they are starting to lose more hit points on the structures at the bottom. Will Q is now trying to get back. Top lane is of course also pushing, so that means that we have the wall pretty much destroyed. And guys, that keep us down. It keeps down. <laughs> they win the halftime show, but they lose the keep. Oh, 33,000 damage for Kira. 34,000 for Diva, who's now also back on the map. But holy hell. That is problematic. Yeah. And Topside is still pushing. Topside is still pressuring. Okay, there's Jimmy. Jimmy gets attacked too. They're trying to make the next play here. Careful, Bronek. The kill against Reyna. Paper my lady. Full on brawl mode at this point with the putrid pile out from Stitches again. Wall stun connects. Diablo gets that, but he's most likely still gonna die here. Uh, maybe not. They're trying to actually go for the kill against Diva instead, but if he still lands a hook here, it would be the end of it. And Kalthazard is low once again. That guy just doesn't have any hit points. Still the same problem for him. The Immortal hasn't been taken yet. The Immortal isn't taken yet either. 16 is close. Dippers! <laughs> Lucio! Uh, he had the stacks together, so he's gonna come back. But yeah, Lucio gets the... Uh, Akira got the kill, actually. Yeah, damage over time here, but Lucio chased it down. Go Rider wants another one and indeed gets it. Triple kill for D.Va. And they hold on to their mortal. 
which is insane, honestly. <laughs> they still have it. Uh, down here, then again. We got Bonnie coming in. Uh oh, Kira is down. Oh, that could be a follow up. <laughs> he wants it. And he gets it. Gaslo and Kira both eliminated. Fight continuing up at the top. Yeah, the attempted kill against Lucio. The fight here turns against Stitch as they take him down as well. It's 11 kills against 11. And we have the Immortal. And they are moving to the bottom. They want to go core. They have two catapults on the core already. Actually, only one. The other one has decided that the tower in the middle is a little bit more important. But yeah, they're trying to take it here. And they might just be able to pull it off. The catapult doesn't really do too much work, but it helps. And that shield is gone in seconds. Now we have Kira back to business. And they might not fully commit. Now it's 92%. The Immortal is still at the top. So as long as they just keep them busy at the bot lane, it means that the Immortal is going to take the top key. And that is a win in and of itself. They got Kane comes out again with another ult. And they're not giving up on this fight. Sound barrier is out. Here comes the bunny hop. Top keep is, as I said, nearly destroyed. And that's all that they wanted to do at the end of the day. Yeah, they might even be able to get a kill here. Uh oh, uh oh, grab a bomb set up. Oh, Dibbles. Yeah, he gets the wall, but he's dead. Dibbles is dead. Problem is that the keep is already gone. And the immortal is not going to be able to finish the core. But it's going to do some serious work there either way. I'm actually wondering at this point if they would have right clicked the shit out of it at this point. Or maybe they could have done it. Probably not. 49% though and both keeps down is pretty significant. So yeah. That's a big, a big problem. But either way, down to the bottom of the map. Jimmy is now taking the next camp. Damage output. Let's have a quick look at it too. 51,000 for D.Va. Top damage for the team. 55,000 for uh, Kira and yeah, everybody else for uh, people, my ladies, pretty much sitting around 30k. 30 to 35,000. So they're trying to come in here again, but the camp is already taken. Aggressive moves. And bot lane is pressuring again. And of course, we are slowly entering Winion territory. It's only 16 minutes into the game, so it's not like 2025 yet. But still, this starts hurting, and <laughs> given the fact that they're already down to 49%, can't really afford to lose anymore. Which is why we have two heroes moving back to deal with the double catapult and the pressure through the Khazras here. So, everything is looking fantastic for Rospedal. They don't even... I mean, all they gotta do is wait for the objective and then delay the fight for as long as possible. Posture in the middle, let the lanes push out with catapults and just play the posture play. Play for time. Time's working in their favor. If they see a kill opportunity, if they see a good fight, take it. But outside of that, don't overcommit. Oh, well, or you could try and backdoor the shit out of it too. <laughs> and it seems like they might be trying to do that. Gas will actually move back. Okay, they're not committing to it. Uh, and, but they forced everybody to a half stone. Yeah, Pippi my lady saw what's happening at the top lane and they said like, guys, we have to get out of here. We have to go back. We have to defend. If they right click the core, then we have to be ready for it. And they are trying to set up a bush party now. So, yeah, here we go. Bush party is up. Uh, they're still trying to make the play top. Okay, could go for the defense. Catapults are a problem now, as I said. But it's it's even talents. That's the one thing that works for Paper My Lady. It's one thing that works in their favor. If they can get a good fight now, get a quick kill, there's still a chance they can... Uh, oh, yeah, hook is already good. That's a nice one. There comes the ult. Uh, but Diva is already moving into the back line and trying to disrupt any kind of coordination here. There's a boss. Here's the grab a bomb. Nearly a kill against Jimmy. And Kel'Thuzad is dead. Resets for Liming. Diablo down, but he'll be back to business. Kel'Thuzad, of course, also on the way back. Nobody can stop him either. Double catapult by now up at the top. Double catapult at the bottom. Far away from the core, but that could change. And Lucio is dead. So that's Lucio down. They're still fighting over the bottom here. Up at the top, Jimmy is already starting to take the hit points off the Immortals. So that's going to be huge. And bot lane and top lane are still pushing. Kira is also down. 14 kills to 13 right now. And the level 20 talents are finally ready. They got Tal Rushers. And they have the Execute now. Bunny Hop upgraded as well. Going straight into... Uh, sorry, not upgraded. Going straight into the headshot here. And off we go. The Shear tries to hunt him down. I actually like how he comes in with this. <laughs> Trying to take the kill on Kel'Thuzad and nearly does. And yeah, that is game. What a match. 30 kills in total. 
in game number one between these two teams. Again, Paper My Lady on map one, usually more happy to experiment. I'm pretty sure we're going to see more standard plays from them on the next and upcoming map, but still, a shout out to Rose Pidol taking the lead in this best of three series here in Division 1. Game number two, Paper My Lady a little bit too meme in game number one. There's nothing wrong with that, but it means that you can end up in a situation where you find yourself behind in the series. Rospidol with the win, Markotzel now on Infernal Shrines on Garrosh. We got Nashir on Gul'dan, Bronik on Tychus, Cassia on Malfurion, and Ten Waklaf on Ural. As the team looks for the 2-0 victory against Paper My Lady, who have been very high up at the top of Division 1 since it started. Always either in first or second spot here. We now have the red team with Dyla on Karazim, the Wilkie on ETC, Ritchie on Diva, Gorider on his Sylvanas, and Cesar Boss on Mediv. So, very, very different setup right off the bat that we have from Paper My Lady here. And yeah, standard talents again. Iron Fist comes in. Let's not forget that Gore Rider Sylvanas is pretty disgusting when played correctly. And of course, ETC also one of the best heroes of Will Q. So, they are definitely taking the second game a bit more serious. But can they win it? That's the question. Now, Medivh as a bit of an X-Factor is always kind of nice. We have on the other side Garrosh and also Malfurion, plus Urel, who could portal control and make sure that people can't get into the portal, that there's no portal attacks coming without them being welcomed immediately by some displacement. But time will tell for sure. It's a bit interesting also to see the dash on level 1 here for Tychus. I mean, one of the reasons why we saw Tychus come back into the game is that on level 1 you now have the option to increase his range through a talent by plus 1, which makes him much safer in those plays. So Bronick not going for that, but instead going for dash is a bit out there. Makes it very, very tricky for him. And again, since we have ETC here for a power slide, we got D.Va as well. And then on top of that, Medivh with potential portal attacks. That could be him playing this just a bit too risky. So most of the Tigers players that we've seen ever since the patch came out have specced into the extra attack range, which made the hero much safer and yeah, honestly a lot more viable. But we'll, we'll find out. Gul'dan on 10 stacks already for his level 1. He's going to provide a lot of the wave clear that we're going to see during the shrine attacks. 17 stacks, by the way, for Medivh, which is pretty sick, actually, this early in the game. So really good for him. And they're already looking for kills, yeah, aren't they? But that was a nice flip from Garrosh. Nicely done by him. And talking ETC and talking Garrosh, as Garrosh was released back in the days of HGC, uh, we actually had ETC as a bit of a counter player to Garrosh. That's one of the things that Fnatic and Breeze in particular have done at this point because they just said, well, you just save your power slide a little bit. If he flips you, you just slide out, you can isolate him. So we've seen that a lot back then. But here's the kill against Sylvanas. We got level 4 and this gives us in the rhythm. And they're making the play for Will Q. Oh, and that might actually be it. Yeah, they get it. They get it, the spray is there, the damage over time too, the grenade connected, and that's the second kill. Ross Piedol, ladies and gentlemen, they are doing work. Now, someone else is doing work too, and that someone is Medivh, who's sitting at 30 stacks. I mean, Sesabors is speedrunning that quest. Holy shit. Sitting at 30 stacks already after two and a half minutes? Damn, son. He's really working with it, and I mean, once they got that, it's gonna be fantastic. So down to the bottom of the map, there's still pressure against the gate, which results in the entire wall being taken apart. Blue team therefore has a bit of a lead, but it's gonna be interesting if they can hold that momentum throughout the game, because I doubt it a little bit, especially once that Cesar boss has his quest completed, he can play much more aggressive. I mean, honestly, it's amazing how quick he is here. He got some really, really nice stacks early on. As long as they... If they kill him now, that would be a disaster. Just imagine him dropping down here and Garrosh just appearing out of nowhere and able to lock him down. But as it stands, he completes it. 3 minutes and 21. 3, 2, 1, and he is done. But ETC is also done. <laughs> 3 kills to 0. So, yep, that's a good lead for Rospidol. Now, we're still fighting over this first objective and the stack count is slightly superior for uh, the blue team, but they're losing Garrosh. Garrosh is down, big portal attack into the back. Gul'dan is dead. 
they want a little bit more. I don't really think they're going to get it, but those two kills alone were already worth it. And they are looking at the first Punisher in this game. They have their own level 7 talent now, which is, of course, fantastic. We get the Arcane Explosion as we speak, and as usual, the Blinding Speed is the level 7 talent choice for Karazim. And ETC even gets the kill against Tykes! Wow! Three kills to three, they get the Punisher, and now they can push through the bottom. Bait over the wall should happen right now, but of course, if you have Mediv, if you have Portals, then that's always... Uh, Mediv? <laughs> that was clutch. That's always a bit more difficult to uh, really maintain it properly. So ETC slides in again. They're, they're hyper-aggressive right now, way more than... I mean, honestly, they were really aggressive in the last game too. It just didn't work out that well. <laughs> now we have Sylvanas pushing. We have them controlling the bot lane completely. And yep, this is this is Fort. They take the Fort down with the first Punisher. They are definitely turning up the heat a little bit. And again, this is their style. When they play in the amateur scene, when they're not playing in a prize money tournament, they take it a little bit more easy in game number one, go for a bit of a different draft, see what they can do here, and then depending on the results, they are stepping it up in uh, game number two, which is exactly what's happening right now. So at this point, they are of course trying to steal as many of those camps away as they can. They are taking this one easy peasy, gives them even more of an experience lead. Won't be able to take that fountain down since Blizzard in the recent patch has... Of oh, well, actually, with me flying there and completely providing vision, uh, I'll take it back. <laughs> Didn't see the bird there for just a second, but he's cheating as usual. No, but Blizzard obviously exchanged the hit point values and the shield values and re regenerates faster, which makes plays like this one a little bit more difficult. But if you have Midi, if you can give continuous vision to that structure, to those Khazras, and then they are attacking it continuously. So unless the opponent takes them down quickly, you will get that fountain one way or another. Either way, now that we have the uh, level 10 abilities through, you have again Bunny Hop in, Transcendence for Karazim, Morshpit even for Will Q. And Mediv still waiting this one out, and there it is, the Leyline setup. Leyline setup is ready. 44 stacks, then again, for the blue team on Tychus. And also, we have actually some really good stacks for Gul'dan. 30 stacks at this point. Usually, if you get your stacks completed by the time that you lock your level 16 talent in and have access to Runa's Affliction, that's kind of okay. The bet I mean, the sooner the better. But this is really a nice stacking process also from the mage player on Ross Pedro's side. And they get their level 10. So they have level 10 now, which gives us the Horrify. I don't really expect any surprises here. I mean, it's going to be Commandeer Odin for Tychus. I would be a bit shocked to see a drill, despite the level 4 talent choice. The days when you went into In the Rhythm plus, plus Drill are kind of over. And on this map in particular, Odin just reigns supreme. I mean, honestly, it's, it's any map, but here even more so than any other. But he's holding it back still. Twilight Dream is also in. And, well, off we go. They're attempting to steal the camp away. And thanks to the explosion, they might be able to do that. Yeah, they take it. That's a big blow against them. Game on, baby. Exactly. That's what we're talking about right now. So, uh, there's Odin. Shocking, I know. You totally didn't see it coming either. But now that they have taken the camp, that means that... Well, it's, it's a top objective. So, it's not really that dangerous. Just imagine if the camp gets stolen away and only Paper My Lady has access to their camp when we have a bottom or a mid objective. That would be a completely different story. But since it's top side, that's still fine. That's about as good as it possibly could get here. Shrine is about to activate. Gul'dan is dead, by the way. Kappa. Yeah, he didn't really make it quite long here. So they are stepping it up heavily. 18,000. Look at Medivh. Monster. Absolute monster. I guess Sylvanas is going to catch him eventually, but right now she's trailing behind too. There's the seven-sided attempt, the slide. Nice, good use of the medallion. And Kotzel stays alive, but just look at the damage that they get in the mid lane. Thanks to Sylvanas. They don't kill the entire thing, but the wall is down the 4 to 50% HP. And they are now pretty much a level ahead and will soon get level 13 talent. So, whew. Yeah, they are crushing. Moving straight topside now to take their own camp, but the objective is up. And with the camp that they're taking, they're going to get more experience. So 13 and a talent advantage is pretty much inevitable. There's no way to avoid that anymore, so... Hmm. Good luck trying to deal with that. And the quest is completed too. <laughs> yeah, that makes thing things even worse right now. The quest is completed as well. So bad news for them. 
Here comes the attack against ETC though. Nice. He is able. Oh, to save him for just a second with the shield. But he still gets locked down. That's the end of Sylvanas, the end of ETC. And just like that, the blue team is back to business on objective number two. <laughs> Nicely done. A little bit unexpected there for a moment, but hey, that was well played. So now it's five kills against four. Objective will go over to the blue team and they can still make their comeback here. Yeah, good for them. Uh, it's going to make this a lot closer because this could have well turned into a bit of a, a bit of a snowball approach here. But right now we still have pressure in the middle. Diva, of course, is not giving up there either. They immediately moved back and said, "Hell, we'll focus on the on the rest of the lanes here," which is what we're currently seeing from them. This one already about to be taken. I don't think that anybody's going to interfere with that. Everybody else is just looking at the top lane, trying to set the push up. Which is exactly what's happening right now. And now the opportunity to just bait it over the wall. Sylvanas, ah, ETC is the one providing the vision. Portals are set up into the back line. Yeah, still trying to make a bit of a play. There's the flip over already as they're isolating this. Diva is pushing the middle. And that's Garrosh down. Garrosh is down. Can they get the Medivh kill? Oh, they cannot. Oh, wow. Tyke is actually moving in from the other side. But Cesabos is still alive. And Diva... Mosh pit first of all. Diva is still active in the middle. It's now coming into the top. They get the kill against Tigers. They get the kill against Gul'dan. And that's a potential kill against Malfurion. Uh, yeah, they go for him and they take him. And that's the end of the 4-2. Holy shit. That, at least, at least the Punisher did work, right? At least the Punisher was able to eliminate them. If not for the Punisher, then this would have been a total fail, but the Punisher takes the fort down. Now, of course, their own fort has fallen too. But yeah, just look at those kill setups. One after another, triple kill, I think, yeah, four kills in total. Urel, as she wasn't part of the fight, the only one that survived. Still trade even in forts, get the kills, have now nearly level 16. They can still move into the middle, get another fort here. Yeah, this is looking just great. But the blue team hasn't given up yet. And they, <laughs> first of all, they still hold the fort, which is ridiculous. But they are also able to get the kill against D.Va, so good for them. Horrify was on point here. And Tigers has by now 97 stacks on his level 4. So that's some serious minigun duration. Gets another 3 seconds at this point. And, well, here comes the move for the camp. Yeah, it's already taken. They're not fighting this one out. It's a 4 versus 5, so you don't really want to. And of course, they don't have their ults ready yet either. But they got the level 16 talent. And that's where we get the cleansing touch. Yeah, that's going to be quite useful uh, against Garrosh in particular. But camps are all going over to Ross Pit all now. And I mean, again, take a bit of a look at the experience gains and leads that we have here. Minion experience, pretty much identical. Both teams have done a good job taking care of the, of the minion uh, waves on the map. Mercenary experience very different picture. Even with the last three Kazara camps taken by Ross Pedal, thanks to those kills, they are trailing heavily behind in mercenary experience because they just lost so much early on. Also, hero experience, as you would expect, passive is also leading for Paper My Lady as they were able to take more of the structures down so they have the increase and uh-oh. Tychus! Yep, that 7 side wasn't even needed. Better safe than sorry. Horrify saves them from losing even more heroes. Oh! Mosh pit! But the insta interrupt. Alright, alright. Garrosh paid attention. That could have backfired hard. And again, they're losing a shit ton of hit points over here and that's the end of Garrosh. Quest is completed for Gul'dan but that doesn't change the fact that they just lost two of their heroes. And here's the push for the middle. Sylvanas disables the structures. That wall's gone. There's no ch chance saving this one. Runa's Affliction is now ready since we have Gul'dan hitting 16 with the rest of the team. They're portaling into the back. They're trying to go for some additional kills. If they can go for staggered deaths here, that would be the dream. Leyline misses completely, by the way. Didn't hit anything. But the keep is exposed, has lost hit points. Now they still need to go for the camps here. I also love the mobility on this. Sylvanas jumps over on the wave. Karazim follows right away with his own dash. Diva is dealing with the top. And yeah, this is just looking solid again. But it's a pretty cool game. I mean, we always have Paper My Lady looking quite good, quite stable, disciplined. Playing some great team fights, going for a good objective. And then all of a sudden, the blue team comes out of nowhere, gets a few kills in, and starts controlling the map again in the attempt to come back into it. But the lead is still pretty consistent for Paper My Lady. So they are ahead here. 
and they are going to try to force that third map. Now, after losing uh, the first one, uh, they have to, of course, to put some pressure onto it now, but it's looking decent. And a third map would be awesome, honestly. Would love that. Sizzling attacks are in for Tykes. Damage output. He's sitting at, well, 33,000. Like, again, on level 1, not going into the extra range makes his life harder. There's no doubt about it. He died three times already. He's way closer to the action. That's one of the biggest criticisms that people had with Tykes for ages now. Gets the Odin out, though, which is great on this map. 11 to 12 stacks. Mosh pit in the back line. And he hits, too. There's the arrow from Silvana. She jumps in and tries to get some damage. Horrify. Ah, the shield. Medivh playing attention. Says boss doing well, but Gora Rider. Oh, oh, is he actually gonna... He is surviving. What? Gora Rider survives. No, he doesn't. Silvanas is down. Tykes was the one who's able to eliminate him. Seven kills, two, ten. Ross Piedol, they are fighting tooth and nail to take the series with the 2-0 and they just claw their way to another objective. Topside gets pushed and one tower is about to fall as Urel moves in. They're still fighting this out in the middle a bit, but of course with that big lead that we already had for the blue team, they are locking it in. There we go. Nice. 7 to 10. And half a level away from 20. Uh, bait over the, well, <laughs> the non-existent gate that immediately disappears. But they, they're going to lose the fort. The only question is really, are they going to lose more? And I don't really think so, unless there's some staggered deaths. But I do not believe that Garrosh will be able to get close enough to anybody to uh, get a kill opportunity for the team. And, I mean, all that happens right now is pretty much a battle for level 20. They're baiting it over the wall again. And Cesapus could even like fake a portal out and try and be a bit aggressive. Well, that's not really a fake, that's a ley line flank. And are they going for a kill? He's looking for the mosh pit. There's the interrupt, seven sided. And Garrosh in trouble, still survives. Will Q, on the other hand, is insanely low. But Sylvanas follows up with the damage on Tykes, is able to get the kill. Here comes the wailing arrow. They're making the play for Gul'dan this time. And Karazim is with them. Comes in, dashes after him. Level 20 talents, of course, applying even more here. Leyline comes out again, and poor Garrosh in the middle of the stun. More speed against two. Both of them are gonna die, and that leaves only Malfurion, and even he might fall here if he shows his face just for a second, because another portal is gonna be ready eventually. But I think this is gonna be the end of it. Paper My Lady, they had to go up against the uh, Punisher. They were able to set up a good defense. And now we have the big push for third game as the red team is going for victory. The Leyline Malfurion's ass can easily take the kill against him. No chance for him. Yeah, gets taken down. So does the core. We are gonna get game number three, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Okay, game three incoming. 15 kills to seven in game number two as we are heading into the final map in this best of three series in division one. Game number three, we're heading to a conclusion here and well, Rospidol against Paper My Lady, the two Polish teams. Sky Temple will be the final map of this series. On the la left side, we have Mark Kotzl on ETC, picking the hero away from Will Q. The Shi on Diva, Cassia on White Main, we have 10 more left on Cassia, and Bronek on Orphea. And on the right side of the map, Will Q and Muradin, Sessabos and Medivh again, after his performance on the last map, he got him once more. Dyla on Anna, Richo on Dehaka, and Gore Rider again on Sylvanas. I gotta say, a couple of the heroes that we're seeing here, really familiar. I mean, a lot of these combos are, I don't want to say the same, but still, it seemed to be quite baseline. And if you look at the meta just in general, Diva at this point doesn't really get banned out that much anymore, but she is a very regular pick. And with the Sylvana setup, they are going for the first attack at the bottom of the map. Medivh makes it possible. He's the one that provided vision, so they could easily move towards the bot lane and take it, and the tower is down. Free tower right at the beginning of the game. Nice. Ah, that's pretty good. I mean, that's exactly what you want. They give up the, uh, the watchtower at the top, which traditionally is the, uh, the position where the teams are brawling a little bit. And then this little setup happens. 
So one tower is already down. Structure takedowns are always nice when you're playing on this map. And if you can push the bot lane then later with some of the siege giants, for example, that's even more of a win. Wheel Q, careful. And okay, didn't quite make a Houdini here. So he is able to get out, but face check the bush nonetheless. Hits another Storm Bolt and goes up to a second stack. Sylvanas is dealing with the Siege Giant camp that I just mentioned. And well, let's go. We got Dyla already sitting tight. White Mane in the meantime sitting here over on the left and helping the team out. But uh, let's see. Again, they had some cool moments in game number two. <laughs> and they're attacking Sazabos right away. He's at 16 stacks already. It was pretty much a speed run on the quest talent completion in game number one. Three minutes and 21 seconds, and he was done with it. So uh, let's see if he can do it once more. Anna is supporting. A oh, 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 careful. Hello. No, it's not happening. No. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and the Harker is just like, all right, I had enough. Leave me alone. Now, Ana is supporting Sylvanas. It's helping her with the camp clear. As Medivh is now at 25 stacks. I mean, Sessabos is out there. He's really getting the stacks. But he's also playing a pretty dangerous game here. There's not an amount of stacks that you want to lose. Level 4 is in. I mean, the good thing is, if your opponent doesn't really have a lot of talents just yet, especially when there are no heroic abilities, then you can play a bit more aggressive as long as you are aware where everybody is positioned. Bill Q is also, like... Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, that didn't work out. Yeah, those additional damage points that the towers do now against heroes, they can hurt. So, of course, we had to show that again. I'm sorry, but silent, sad moment for Ophia. All right, that's enough. Anyways, Paper My Lady, of course, take that first blood without complaints. They're like, yep, thank you very much. Didn't even have to do anything for it. Just baiting with Murden a little bit. And that worked nicely. I always knew that Wilkie was a master baiter. It was well done by him. So now that we are looking at the first objective, this is, of course, where we're... Ooh, and that's going to be get a double channel for the red team. But this is, of course, where the real party happens. And at the bottom of the map, still a three versus three fight. Top side now, yeah, a couple of shots taken by Muradin, who can still play around this one. Diva has chased the Harka off, who has to also deal with the camp. That's another thing. But Sylvanas is still at the bottom of the map. Go Rider might actually just try and push this, too. As Medivh has already lost the chance to go for a new record here. So he's a little bit slower with the quest completion than game one, but he is still pretty quick. 36 stacks. Hello, sir. We have our heavy impact on level 7. Plus the Thunderburn. Sessapos is still not quite done, but either way, it's still pretty remarkable how quickly he completes the baseline here. Always assuming that he doesn't die now. And talking about dying, Diva dead. Or fear the bot lane taken down too. What the hell is happening? People are dying that shouldn't be dying. All of a sudden, top and bot lane are completely under control of Paper Lady. That shouldn't happen. Those were ones versus ones, pretty much. Yeah, White Man has to be very careful that Wilkie doesn't hit another Storm Bolt because they are heavily outmanned here. Cassia has moved down to the bottom of the map to try and save what she can off that wall. Sylvanas has crushed that thing. And now we have three kills to zero, nearly a level lead. This is a huge advantage, especially considering that the uh, next objective is going to be bot lane and could theoretically even mean a loss of a fort for Rospiedol. Another attack set up as they're trying to hold the point, and they do. Tehaka comes in. White may might be in trouble here. Muradin is still on it. Muradin. Ophia. Oh, Coffin Girl is doing work. Oh, the brawl. What the hell? The kill against Ophia. She's the first one to fall. There's the shield, and they're losing everything. ETC is down. Ophia is down. Sylvanas counter kill. Five versus five on the point. Who gets the bloody camp? Medivh with the kills! <laughs> what the hell? They take the camp and it's a five-man wipe. <laughs> what the fuck? What an insane brawl. The early level 10, one and a half level lead. They just all committed to it. All of them were just like, they pushed all the chips in the middle and just said, guys, all in. 
all in right here. Muradin has gone into Haymaker, taken a page out of the NA playbook. Actually, not quite. He at least goes into a very sustainable build when he goes Haymaker. So we have him on level 1 with Third Wind, and we have him with Thunderburn plus Healing Static next. So it's a little bit more of a safer option than what we've seen in the CCL exhibition matches, where solo tank Murden players without a Medivh behind them and without a good side laner have gone into a Haymaker build with very little self-sustain, so it's a bit more of a setup that you can actually play with, especially considering that you have Medivh here. So he can set the portals up, and they're going deep into the backline. Oh my god! Double kill is in already. Make it a triple, baby! And that's the fort eliminated too. They are crushing. Check that out. Back into the backline. Bam! Double kill, going for the triple, and then also eliminating the fort. And of course, that's easy access to the boss. 11 kills to 1. 11 to 1, they are getting crushed here. Now, they didn't have level 10, which is, of course, how this entire fight came to came to pass in the first place. Diva, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I like the optimism. I like the optimism, but I don't think so. ETC, they dodge it out. They're still fighting for it. They committed to the last one. Now they're committing to another fight. I'm not sure if this is really the uh, way to uh, make a comeback in this game. As it stands, the boss is taken. And there's already more damage on structures to the Siege Giants. By the way, keep in mind, we're only seven minutes in, right? So we still have at the bottom of the map the second objective. Objective number two is at the bottom of the map and has so far not been uh, uh, not been claimed. Nobody's actually moving in for this. The Hakan Silvanas are in the middle of the map doing their thing there. But <laughs> Jesus, this is, this is rough. Healing static. Yeah. Uh-oh. ETC. ETC. How much damage does Mel does <laughs> a nano boosted Medivh, by the way? 29,000. He's crushing. That nano boosted Medivh is ripping them a new one. 31,000 here for Sasabos. And he is absolutely destroying. Good for him. And keep in mind, this is these are three players. Sylvanas is in the middle, is taking a fort down. At the top we have Tehaka trying to do the exact same thing. So yep, this is <laughs> this is nuts. Especially since they now also have a talent advantage. Which pretty much means that if you have now it, like even if you have the heroes on the map to go for a fight, if your opponent has a talent advantage, you don't want to take that. <laughs> Camp is taken away too. Uh, this is just getting worse and worse and worse, isn't it? Yeah, they are not having a lot of fun here. Comeback for Rospier Doll would really... I mean... It would mean that you have to find a good opportunity to fight and then go for a well-coordinated effort. But as long as Cesar Boss on his Medivh is playing the way that he does, he is going to destroy them. And Gore Rider has now rotated away from the team again to move to the bottom of the map and take the uh, take the keep down. So yeah, he's looking great as well in that spot. They are playing the macro style now. They have the global on the map with the Haka. Sylvanas is moving around. You have the portal escapes with Medif. Medif himself is just crushing on the damage output and pretty much everywhere else. So he's looking absolutely solid here. And I mean, I like it. Uh, move at the bot lane, the keep is already down as you've seen, but still we have a three level lead now if they can get kills here, oh the ley line and the isolation the end of D.Va the pilot oh my god it's a disaster, it's a disaster they are all dead they are all dead yeah, here are the kills again as we have two survivors trying to do their best to keep them from core I don't know if they can core though we're not even at the 10 minute mark. Those death timers are incredibly low. I don't think they can core here. And top lane is pushing, so there's going to be a 4 down. And yeah, they're moving away from the core already. The problem... <laughs> oh my god. They still get the kills. Can they core this? There's no way. Death timers are way too low to core. Not with the setup they have. If they had a different setup, if they had a Greyman in here, like Tyrell or something... I mean, first of all, then they wouldn't be in the position they're in right now, but that would give them maybe a chance. But I just don't see that happening. Careful of here. Careful. Bronek doesn't want to die again. There's the ley line. And yep, that's Sophia then, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. <laughs> they are farming. 
They are farming them right now. All right, maybe we're going to see them core after all. I mean, now it's 10 minutes in. That changes everything. Now the boosted Muradin. Kappa. Ten. <laughs> Get wrecked. Paper, my lady, going ham on this one. Wow. Just wow, wow, wow. Yep, they crushed this hard. 16 talents are in. Damage output is there. Four levels ahead. 22 kills against one, and they claim it. A 2-1 victory for Pepe, my lady. Ladies and gentlemen, what a series, and what a final map. Holy cow. Polish team went bananas here.